Hello and welcome to another Crusader Kings 3 Dev Diary. This time we're going to be talking about Holy Orders. And now in CK2, Holy Orders were, in my opinion at least, quite a lot of fun to play with. Uh, things like the Yom's Vikings and uh, the Knights Templar, this kind of thing. Holy Orders were like mercenaries, but you paid for them with piety and they wouldn't attack anyone of the same faith as them. They were a lot of fun to play with. Uh, interesting mechanics to them. And uh, generally, the Holy Orders were pretty bloody strong. Um, especially if you wanted to go on Crusade, naturally. Vassalizing the uh, the various Holy Orders as well was a thing that I used to quite often attempt to do. Uh, but let's hope that uh, CK3 expands upon what made the Holy Orders fun. And and I guess we'll, we'll just dive in and, and see if that's what they've done. So... Hello everyone, I'm back with some spicy information about Holy Orders in CK3. Let's start off with some general information. Holy Order is an independent military organization that fights to defend and expand the influence of their faith. Their first and foremost loyalty in the game will be to their god or gods. If you read the earlier dev diary about mercenaries, you'll notice that the Holy Orders have a lot in common with them, succession being a title with a court, etc. However, unlike mercenaries, the members have dedicated their lives to higher purpose than that of the pursuit of gold. How incredibly noble indeed. So here we have Grandmaster Mazgaba of the Mujahideen of Asa. He is a, I assume, Sunni? No. What is it? It's a, it's a, it's one of the, one of the sects of Islam. I, I don't know which one it probably is. I, I can't, I can't say. But, uh, yeah, we've got this guy. He's the Grandmaster. And lovely little palace thing going on behind him. Uh, I will say yet again that I wish that these were GIFs instead of uh, flat images because, you know, pausing a GIF makes the GIF look a bit meh. And you know, the eyes are all glassy, the, the hair doesn't look especially good, and I feel like that is probably down to it being a moving image that has been paused. I think it's probably going to look a lot better when it's moving. So yeah, GIF these, pretty please. He's also got Incredible Marshal, which I guess you would expect from a Grandmaster. Incredible Marshal, Incredible Learning. It makes complete sense. 17 uh, prowess, that's his fighting skill. So yeah, it makes, uh, it makes this guy a, quite a formidable opponent. He's got order member, giving him more martial and more prowess. May not inherit titles, may not marry. Interesting. Uh, or Were all of the orders, you know, no one can marry when you're in them? Were the Yom's Vikings like that? Did they not allow marriage? I'm not sure if that's the case for all of them. Hopefully that's different depending on which holy order it is. Okay. Much like in CK2, you'll be able to hire holy orders to help you out in religious wars, but unlike in CK2, they will fight all enemies once hired. Even people of their own faith? I mean, that seems a bit, eh. Kind of a simplification of, of them, to be honest. Thing to keep in mind, however, is that holy orders are dismissed as soon as you're no longer at war with someone of another faith. So make sure to really time those wars right. So yeah, you you start fighting against somebody of a different faith. You hire the the holy order; they're super strong, and they come in and they'll smash your religious brethren, and then you end your war with the weak, um, you know, heretic that you were fighting. I mean, I don't like it, honestly. Straight away, something I don't like. Um, it was quite interesting that they couldn't fight people of the same faith. And it's, I, I guess, sort of watered down by not having that. Anyway, we have here the Knights Templar. They come with uh, quite a lot of soldiers, two knights. The Knights Templar have two knights, but then they also have 200 Order Knights, uh, and then another 100 Order Knights. So I, I guess... That's a, that's a hefty amount of knights for two knights. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Then we got Grandmaster Bermudu, who actually got pretty weak martial if we compare him to uh, this fella, Mazgaba. So he's a Catholic Holy Order. Of course, the, the Order Knights, you can see their stats here. Order Knights count as spearmen and archers. They're good in plains and deserts and hills and... Sorry, not good in hills, not good in mountains. Um, 52 attack, 40 defense, um, movement speed, I think that is, and then, oh, I can't remember what these are, but we did a dev diary on it before, I'm gonna have to go and read it again. Um, but yeah, they're, they look, they look pretty strong, and they, they should be strong, definitely they should be strong. Um, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. 
Aside from ordinary levies, a holy order also has a number of men-at-arms regiments that are special for holy orders based on religion and not faith. For example, Order Knights. These regiments will work as many regular men-at-arms and have a type, specified turn effects, etc. They're truly a force fighting for the good of your faith, or of course a scary opponent to face on the battlefield. You can only ever hire a single holy order. Very interesting, that is definitely different. But if you are the patron of an order, more on this further down, it costs nothing to rope them into your religious conflicts. Ha, who needs mercenaries? And unlike mercenaries, they'll stick around with no time limit, no three-year contracts. If you are the king or an emperor and have a pile of gold and a bigger chunk of piety, you can found a new holy order in your realm by leasing a valid holding, a city or a castle, to the order. Okay, we now have Mahayana Holy Order founded. With your support, Grand Mistress Bhavashankari, nailed it, has founded the Guardians of Bodhkaya. Gaya. Yeah, cool. Um, is that that's a Maya, Maya heart? This one. It's that. Good. Nice. This initial holding granted to the Holy Order will be the basis for the Holy Order's levies and taxes, their headquarters, if you will. You can only create one Holy Order, but you can still end up being the patron of several, for example, by taking over land where a Holy Order of your faith has their headquarters. The headquarters is the stronghold of the Holy Order, and the first king or emperor upwards in the liege hierarchy is their formal patron, the one that can use them for free in wars. The patron must, of course, be of the same faith as the Holy Order. However, if there is no ruler of sufficient rank around to patron the Holy Order, it is self-sufficient enough to still function. All right. Now we have Govun, that is a uh, castle holding. I assume that is where, yeah, Grand Mistress. Shankar. Wait a minute, it says your castle holding. Can you become the head of a holy order? I, I, I feel like probably not because of the, you know, whole not marrying thing. But that would be cool. I mean, it does say your holding, and this is the holding of this person. Oh, no, lessee. So you're, oh, it's being leased out. Oh, never mind then. Ah, oh, I was getting excited there. Damn it. <laughs> If a Holy Order's headquarters is lost, another holding will be selected to fill a role with a preference for holdings within their current patron's realm. But if the Holy Order has no more holdings, the Holy Order is disbanded. Keep in mind this is understandable that the Grand Master and Mistress will take all opportunities they see to get hold of more land. After founding a Holy Order, you might see some events, much like in CK2, where the Order can gain more holdings in many realms. And yes, these events do often involve loans and threats of godly wrath. Greetings, King Garcia of Galicia. I do not look, not look kindly upon those who break their word, and neither does the Lord. To rectify this slight, you will lease the barony of Vilalba to us, so we may further God's work. Signed, Grandmaster Zerardu of the Knights Templar. That's pretty scary, but again, well, not again, but coming from somebody who looks this young, um, you should not be a Grandmaster. I don't, I don't feel like this is Zerardu. I would hope that this is King Garcia, just when he's younger. Having a grandmaster be a 16-year-old is a bit iffy. I no longer owe the order any... Okay, so if you lease gold from the knights, um, they may demand a castle in return. Or you could do what the French did and accuse them all of heresy and burn them, I assume. The Holy Order can also try and expand their forces if they spy a fitting candidate. After all, it's hard to fight heretics without enough warriors. There will always be a need for true warriors to halt any threat to the Catholic faith. With the many aptitudes and a few prospects of inheritance, I believe your son Guilin could lead a better life serving the Knights Templar. With us, he will train, learn, and bring great honour upon your name. So, Guilin gains Order member and joins the court, and you get some opinion, you gain some fervour, and... Uh, the dynasty gains renown. Interesting. I mean, I would totally do that if it wasn't my primary heir. Or if my primary heir was trash and my secondary heir was better. That I could totally see myself doing that. However, we all know that holy orders also have a secondary function. To stash your worthless fourth son somewhere, he can't cause any trouble. You can ask almost all your courtiers to take vows, and depending on your gender doctrines the, and the existence of a holy order in your faith, they will either be sent to fight for your faith or become a part of the clergy. Interesting. It used to be that you could just order them to take the vows and they become part of the clergy, but now, now you're going be, to be able to send them to fight for you. Oh, I love it. Fantastic. 
So, on accept the gain, I guess this is the fervor for the Norse. Um, gains the trait or the member, you get a level of devotion. Um, you'll leave the court for a holy order, very nice. You'll not accept, but you can use hooks to, to force them. Oh, that's interesting. Um, hopefully not using one of the hook farms that we were talking about last, uh, last week. If you no longer see the need to keep a holy order around, or if you really need that holding for something else, you can revoke a holy order's lease to kick them out of your land. This will, of course, make both the Grand Master, Grand Mistress, and the Head of Faith, if one exists, less than pleased with you. I hope you're as excited as I am to see holy orders in the game, or I'm excited to see them crop up in my faith, not my enemies. Yeah, fighting enemy holy orders, that was always scary. That was very, very scary. I, I play quite a lot of Norse characters. Seeing, uh, you know, the Knights Templar rock up in fucking Denmark was a scary prospect. They could win battles that, you know, many times their number. They were they were pretty damn strong. Um, anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you for reading. Next week we'll continue the religious theme. Stay tuned for heresies and doctrines. Very nice. All right, so there are some forum comments that we need to go and have a look at. So uh, let's head on over there. So, um, first off, the Dev Diary was posted for me uh, about six hours ago. And so far, it's got, you know, plenty of agrees, plenty of helpfuls, only one disagree. So, relatively well, uh, um, you know, received Dev Diary. Things can obviously change, um, but so far, it's been pretty well received. Nice Dev Diary will be able to tell whether a character would be going to join a Holy Order or the clergy before the character is asked to take the vows. Uh, yes, you can. Lovely. It will be shown in the interaction preview window before you send the request. Fantastic. To be clear, every faith has its own holy order, though the amount can vary from zero to around one per king or emperor. When creating a new holy order, how is the name decided? Can you customize the name as founder or patron? Can custom faiths create holy orders too? Every faith can have their own holy orders, yes. Most kings and emperors will not found one since it will be fairly costly, but a faith can hypothetically end up with a bunch. We pre skipped the names of for faiths and religions, Christian Holy Orders have, among others, the Knights of the Chalice, Guardians of the Shroud, Knights Hospitalia, and if they run out of the if they run out, the order will be named after the barony you lease them. Ugh, that's, that's not cool. I, I would love to be able to name them myself. Custom Faith can absolutely create their own holy orders. I I just feel like if you pre-script them, then you're gonna end up in a situation where some of the faiths won't have as many pre-scripted holy orders as the others. And you're going to probably end up in a situation where you've just got a bunch of order of random barony area. And that's just going to be so iffy. Hmm. Am I blind or zizzer? Or, uh, or zizzer? Am I blind or zizzer? <laughs> Does the dev diary not mention what it costs to hire a holy order? Just that it's free if you're the patron. And it costs piety. Yeah, same as uh, CK2 then. When creating a holy order, how is the name decided? Uh, you cannot choose their names. Pick from a pool of historical ones. They, if they run out, it's generated. We knew that from the previous comment. Can holy orders still control holdings in multiple realms? Uh, yes, we learned that in the dev diary. Try reading. Uh, what stops everyone to have dozens of holy orders since any king or emperor can create one? Patron of a holy order cannot create a new one. Yeah, you can just inherit them by conquest. Uh, does somebody know if we'll be able to play as a clergy? No, you can't. Everyone, everyone knew that. Oh, that's kind of a disappointing slew of extra comments. Honestly, I was hoping for a bit more. There's usually a hefty amount more, but uh, evidently not today. So, my my thoughts. Um, they don't seem too different from what they are like in CK2. They don't seem a whole lot different. Being able to found a new holy order is cool. Uh, and I think in CK2 you just had to wait until they popped up. Um, like they were event driven. And that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. You can you can create them yourself. Um, that's cool. Um, the way that the holy orders interact with your ruler is cool. I like that a lot. The holy order coming to you and saying, oh, by the way, I, I want your son. That I love that. I think that's fantastic. Uh, what I don't like is that the Holy Order can fight people of their own faith. Um, I, th I feel like that's sort of against what Holy Orders are supposed to be, and it feels like it's a it's a it's a dumbing down of the system um, in an effort to make it, you know, 
easier for people to understand. Like if people have a, a holy order in their in their forces, they're roaming around in a, in the same army or around the same army. Um, yeah, in Seeker Two, it could get confusing because you would move your your army that you control um, to reinforce a battle that you are currently having, and lo and behold, these guys cannot take part, and it was kind of irritating. And for a new player, it would be kind of confusing. Why is this unit that I control not reinforcing this battle that I'm currently having? They're standing in the same province. I understand that it was a bit confusing for new players, but at the same time, that's just what Holy Orders did. And as soon as you learned that, oh, Holy Orders can't fight people of the same faith, it made sense. It seems like they are getting rid of that aspect of Holy Orders in a way to make it easier to understand for new players, and so that situation is going to come up. And I feel like that's a shame. I do feel like that is a shame. Um, but on the whole, it's nice to see Holy Orders back. Um, I'm certainly going to be creating some. I'm going to be the patron of a Holy Order. Um, so we're going to have the Yom's Vikings, of course, and a Holy Order. I'd, I'd love to see the name list for the, the Norse Holy Orders. It's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, that that's pretty much it. Um, that is the Dev Diary in a nutshell. So thank you all very much for watching uh, my video on the 23rd Dev Diary. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please do leave them down in the comment section below. Am I alone in thinking that that's a, that's a bad thing, that they're changing it so they can attack people of their own faith? Because I, I feel like that's a bad thing. But I'd love to know what you guys think. So again, leave it uh, down in the comment section below. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.